bass, bass, hit your face, you be like Balkans and the countries within it are likely familiar to many of you. These countries are typically small in size, inhabited by warm people and generally have temperate weather conditions. They consist of sparsely populated nations that have separated from various empires in the past and subsequently shown limited development. One of these countries is Albania with only 28,000 square kilometers in size and a population of approximately 3 million, it is a small Balkan country. However, do not simply see them as a nation of 3 million, because in North Macedonia, one out of every three individuals identifies as Albanian, and in Kosovo, more than half of the population speaks Albanian and identifies themselves as Albanian. We had the chance to stay there for a week, and we will try to describe the country to you in three videos. The first two videos will be based on the information provided by our Albanian guide, where we will learn quite up-to-date information about the country. The third and final video will solely focus on our own observations of life in Albania during our week-long stay. For example, if you go to the capital Tirana and want to have a local breakfast specific to their culture, you will encounter pastries, just like in North Macedonia and Kosovo. Albanians do not have a unique breakfast style of their own. They start their day with pastries, similar to other Balkan countries. We don't have anything special, but we have burek. These pastries are called burek, and those who do not want to eat them can buy a slice of pizza from different corners of the city. People in the Balkans tend to make their pastries quite oily. Some bureks contain meat, while others are filled with cheese or spinach. If you are someone who does not eat every type of meat, it's advisable to ask what kind of meat is in the burek when buying from these shops. Because Albania has various religious beliefs, with Muslims abstaining from pork while Christians may consume it. One way to distinguish these shops from each other is by looking for the phrase halal food on the signs of Muslim-run establishments. Especially in the recent past, like many states in the Balkans, Albania was also part of the Ottoman Empire, and after the Ottomans lost these lands, the country was invaded by countries such as Italy, Greece, and Serbia. Following these occupations, the Albanian society, trying to find itself, gradually fell under the influence of communism. Even today, when you visit there, you can see that the Ottomans and Italians have had a significant impact on their culture, cuisine, and way of life. For example, they have given Italian leaders names to squares, such as Victor Emmanuel Samuel Square, or given Italian names to well-known Albanians, such as Mother Teresa. After the Ottomans and Italians, the country entered a period of communism. Those familiar with history know that Albanians had a very famous and important communist leader known as Enver Hoxha. This man led the Albanian Labour Party from 1941 to 1985. Enver Hoxha, who managed to be the leader of Albania for about 41 years, is said to have increased the country's literacy rate from about 5% to 90%, built various railways in the country and ended epidemics. Nevertheless, he was someone who closed all religious institutions in the country and turned the country into a secular structure. In other words, religion was completely banned in the country and the country evolved into a kind of atheist structure. In fact, if you go to Albania today, you will see countless underground tunnels in the country, many of which were built by Enver Hoxha himself as a precaution against a possible war and are now turned into museums. One of them is located in the heart of the capital. We went inside, and if you are interested in the legacies of communism, the rooms and objects in these underground tunnels can really grab your attention. Once upon a time, people were subjected to difficult and harsh conditions, and now the memories of those people are open to visitors. In conclusion, we can say that after the collapse of the Soviet Union, the effects of communism also ended in Albania. Enver Hoxha, the communist leader, passed away in 1985. According to our guide, when communism ended in the country, it fell into a governance vacuum. In fact, some Albanians were even given the chance to migrate to Italy and acquire Italian citizenship. Some of the young Albanians at that time migrated to Italy and various regions of Europe. In fact, our local friend says that as a result, there is a shortage of middle-aged people in their country now, and if you visit the capital, you will see more Generation Z youths aged 18 to 20 and very elderly people. 
Albanians, despite being under the influence of other nations and cultures for so many years, have managed to reach the modern times without assimilating. However, although they identify as Albanian, many aspects of their daily lives are a combination of the influences of the nations they have been under. For example, the fact that half of the country's population is Muslim, or that they eat dishes derived from Turkish culture and some people's appearance has characteristics inherited from the Ottomans. While their fashion, sports and clothing styles are influenced by Italians is an example of their being influenced by Italians. In fact, when you talk to some Albanians, you'll find they don't follow their country's football teams. They watch Italian leagues instead. As a result, they feel closer to Europe than to Asia. The thing is that being in um, Albania, we are like very close to Europe. We're not Europe, okay? Uh, we're Balkans. We're strongly believers that we're Balkans. Um, we consider ourselves very close to Italy, I think that is part of the history from the Roman times uh, to the times that we were under the Italian influence uh, and their political, economical control and moving to the Ottoman Empire. <laughs> yes, of course, we do consider ourselves very close to Turkey. I think that that comes from the uh, Ottoman Empire and the, the fact that they were over here for a couple of centuries. Uh, that makes the food similar to them, that makes the, um, the... We have a lot of words, but also we do still feel a little bit European. We don't feel like very Turkish. We still feel a little bit Italian, a little bit European. But in the real core of ourselves, we do know that we are Balkans. <laughs> Albania has a distinctive flag. While most national flags tend to have cheerful, bright tones, this country's flag is composed of as dark shades as possible. It has a dark red background with an eagle, which they describe as the Albanian eagle, in the foreground. The Albanian flag gives me a somewhat gloomy feeling. The guide says that the red background of their flag symbolizes the blood of the people killed during the wars in Albania and especially during the communist regime. She also says that the eagle in front of the flag is a symbol of power. In fact, even during the Eastern Roman Byzantine period, the eagle was used as a symbol of power. And this understanding was passed down to them. The fact that the eagle has two heads symbolizes the unity of the Albanian people. We know that most people living in the Balkans are low-income individuals and that their money is less valuable compared to Europe. Since many of them are not members of the European Union, they use their own currencies. Even countries like Romania and Greece, which are members of the European Union, still use their own currencies. The currency of Albania is called the Albanian Lek. As we are writing this text, we can say that one euro corresponds to 102 Albanian Leks. If you are among those who earn euros and think that you can buy plenty of things with one euro, which equals 100 Leks, when you go to Albania, unfortunately, that's not the case, my friends. The value of everything from supermarkets to restaurants and shops in Lek is quite high and there is hardly anything below 200 Lek. Therefore, Albanians have very large banknotes. For example, they have banknotes worth 2,000 Lek. Similarly, they have coins with high unit values such as 5, 20 and even 100 Lek. For example, you can think of this 1,000 Albanian currency in the guide's hand as equivalent to 10 euros. You can understand the approximate euro value of each Albanian currency by removing two zeros. So, compared to the euro, Albanian money remains quite low in value. Albanians have their own unique language, officially known as Albanian. Although it has been influenced by Greek and Serbian due to the 1,000 years of Eastern Roman rule and by Turkish and Arabic during the 400 years of Ottoman rule, it bears similarities to Latin and Germanic languages. Therefore, an Albanian speaker can usually understand and quickly learn Italian and German. However, only Albanian is officially recognized in the country.
For instance, according to the guide, there are no official language education other than Albanian in schools. Similarly, you need to use this language to conduct business in public institutions. For instance, we asked the guide to say a few things in Albanian and she explained to us how to pronounce and what they meant. Um, so the first word that you need in Albanian uh, is how to say hello. Mm, hello in formal Albanian is persondetje. Or for normal people, it's tkemi, which is what's up. Um, how do you say thank you in Albanian? You say faleminderit. But also if you listen to people saying rofsh, which means, which means I wish you a long life, it's similar to thank you. Um, also, how do you say please when you're asking for something? We say tlutem. How do you say good morning? Mirmanjeth. And if you're going to say good evening, you're going to say Mirmbroma. How do you say good night? It's Nathan Emir. And if you're going to say goodbye and you're seeing someone again, you say Mirupakshim, which in Albanian it means I hope that I will see you good. Mirupakshim. So Mirupakshim. Not all people living in Albania are Albanian. According to the guide, 82% of the population consists of Albanians, while the rest includes Italians, Middle Easterners, various Balkan communities, and of course, Roma communities. 82% uh, we are Albanians. There is no, nothing different. The small percentage that is left, they're um, Romanians, Bulgarians, Montenegrins that live in the countries, Greek, uh, the small Rome community. As in all Balkan countries, you can see gypsies begging children almost everywhere in Albania. These people are really not ashamed of begging children. Foreigners from different parts of the world come to this country to do business and settle with their families. For example, Italians can open clothing stores or Arabs and Turks can open kebab shops. Those coming from outside Albania first step foot in the capital, Tirana. Unlike most other Balkan countries, Albania has a significant advantage in that it has direct access to the sea. Therefore, people can enter the country by sea or by land. But assuming you're flying into the capital, Tirana, you should know some important locations there. You will definitely see Skanderbeg Square in the heart of the capital. Albanians consider this place the heart of the capital. It is indeed a huge square and one of the busiest locations. Surrounding the square are the Opera House, Mosque, National Museum, Statue of Skanderbeg and various cafes. If you're wondering who Skanderbeg is, he is a figure from the early 1400s who is now considered the national hero of Albanians. This square used to be closed to pedestrian traffic during the communist regime, and after the collapse of this regime, it was decided that this vast area would be a social space for the public. Aside from the main square in the country, they also have quite a large pyramid, and if you bother to climb to the top of this pyramid, you'll have the chance to see most of Tirana from above. This pyramid was built in honor of Enver Hoxha during his time, and it was designed by his son-in-law. Besides the main squares in the capital, it's also necessary to talk a bit about the characteristic features of the people living here, especially Albanians. This way, you can roughly understand the social structure before coming here for a visit or to live. At least the guide mentioned one negative aspect. Unlike the silly nationalist pride, like we have no negative traits, as seen in North Macedonia, she didn't go into that. The guide mentioned that her people are lazy. So Balkan people are famous for being, especially Albanians, are famous for being very lazy. <laughs> very lazy. This explains why we don't like working that much and then employment may be high. Um, well, I think laziness is a point. Um, we're not very active. Indeed, despite being right next to European countries, Balkan countries like Albania haven't developed 
and one wonders why. There's a kind of indifference in countries like Albania. People seem to live day to day, leading an unplanned life. I guess this situation stems from recent war traumas, the influence of bad political leaders, or maybe the people really just don't like to work. Additionally, Albania doesn't often make headlines in daily life. Frankly, I don't see Albanians in the world news much. They're not experts in any field of work and I haven't heard of any famous brands associated with them. Perhaps these people are really not hard-working. What sets them apart from neighbouring Balkan countries like Kosovo and North Macedonia and makes them relatively more developed is probably their much larger tourism income due to their coastline directly on the sea. Especially many people from Europe come to places like Albania for cheap beach vacations. However, the general positive characteristic of the people is that they are friendly, helpful and warm towards outsiders. This trait is common in almost all Balkan countries. I guess the beautiful climate in this region with sunny, temperate weather makes people have positive characters and smiling faces. I also asked the guide if Albanians are racist. She said they are entirely friendly and not prejudiced against any nation. She mentioned they are extremely nationalistic but not racist. They just look at black African people more attentively when they come to their country because black people are not commonly seen in the Balkans. Um, we are very nationalistic, yes. When it comes to racism, mm, I don't feel that we are racist, honestly, to be honest. Um, well, it's not acceptable to say, but I'm going to say if you are black, uh, we are going to stare at you a lot. But it's just out of curiosity. Because in Albania, uh, we are only Albanian. We don't have mixtures of... Our local friend Ena says that cities like Vlora and Saranda are even more expensive than the capital Tirana. So it's worth asking how much the average person earns monthly and whether they earn enough to survive as a family. The minimum wage nowadays, well, since 2023, the minimum wage is 400 euro. So if you're, let's say, a waiter or a bartender, that's what's going your wage to be around. OK, it's like 400 euros. Maximum that you can get tips and everything is 600. Um, how many, how much they get paid per hour? We don't get paid per hour. In here, rent is expensive depending on the area. The closer you are to the center. As far as I understand, even though there is seaside tourism here, monthly incomes are not very high. The minimum monthly income in the country is only equivalent to 400 euros. Albanians earn an average of around 500 to 600 euros a month from their jobs. I guess there is a complaint about this, as Albanian leaders are trying to raise salaries to the 900 euro range. For example, in various countries in Europe like Switzerland and also in the United States, people receive wages on an hourly basis. If you come to live in a country like Albania from a country where wages are based on an hourly rate, you should know that such a concept does not exist in these lands. People in countries like Albania earn money based on a fixed monthly salary, not according to working hours. It should also be clearly stated that there is a tendency towards foreign countries in the country, as in other Balkan countries. Especially young people, after completing their education, tend to go to more developed European countries for a permanent life rather than staying in the Balkans. Among them are countries like Germany, France and Italy, which offer a wide range of jobs. Additionally, looking at the monthly rents of apartment buildings in the capital Tirana online, it's almost impossible to find a rental apartment below 400 euros. So we can say that for a decent living in Albania's capital, at least two out of a family of four people need to work, and a minimum net income of around 1,500 euros per month needs to be brought into the household. The reason for mentioning the monthly cost for four people is that, like in other Balkan countries, Albanian people also lead a family-oriented life. Family means everything to them, and they stick together in life. A husband and wife usually see two children as sufficient in this country. If you go out on a Sunday and observe the surroundings a bit, whether in parks or cafes, people are always sitting with their families, spending time with them. Some spend Sundays at home with their families, while others spend them outside. 
So for them, Sunday means spending time with family. In terms of religion, there is religious freedom in the country. In the Balkans, people believe in whatever they want and there is no religious oppression. This region has been ruled by both European kingdoms and Muslim states like the Ottoman Empire for hundreds of years. Today, in countries like Albania in the Balkans, there are numerous mosques and churches. Throughout the day, you can hear both the call to prayer from mosques and the ringing of church bells. Since religious beliefs are not a symbol of power in the Balkans, they are not directly a source of political power. People in these countries are not subject to politics based on religion and therefore politicians have to produce smarter policies. In fact, within the same family, there are individuals who adhere to both Islam and Christianity. For example, in a Christian Albanian family during the Ramadan month, even if there is only one Muslim in the family, a good example is shown. On the last day or two of Ramadan, Christian individuals in the family also fast out of respect for the Muslim individual's beliefs. On the other hand, there are some notorious aspects in the country as well. Just as the country has positive values like Albanian liver, it also has negative reputations like the Albanian Mafia. Especially this bad reputation about the country is known in almost every part of the world. For example, serious mafia organizations in the Balkans are generally run by Albanians and are known as the Albanian Mafia. The Albanian Mafia is recognized as one of the most serious criminal organizations in the world. Some claims even suggest that some people running businesses in Albania pay protection money to the Albanian Mafia. There are even those who claim that if you are going to open a business in a busy area of Tirana, the Mafia will surely harass you in some way. However, if you are only going to the country for tourism purposes, rest assured that the country is quite safe. This video was the first part about Albania. We will publish two more videos about this country in the coming days. We would be glad if you like the video and subscribe to the channel. Goodbye.